Welcome everyone and thanks for being here. Today's topic is using Coach Accountable Groups. And as it says here in the subtitle, giving your clients more through earnest experience of you know, having a community when they're going through their coaching experience and enlivening group experiences. And we'll kind of get into what that means. It's a little hand wavy, but um, there's good things to be had in doing all of this. So I want to open with something that was totally unscripted, totally unintended, and quite fortuitous given the timing. Um, on Monday, we got an email from Andreas in Norway. And I don't usually want to do this, but I'm just going to shut up and give you guys a few seconds to read this. Here's what Andreas wrote. All right, does everyone get that? Uh, I think especially the last sentence really brings it home. I mean, that's pretty great outcome that we're looking for. And uh, indeed, that's the sort of thing we're going for. Um, in two ways, that's true. Uh, one, us as you know, creators of a coaching platform uh, that enables this sort of thing, we're going for these kinds of experiences to be possible, to be doable, to be easy, to actually kind of naturally come out of you using the system to its fullest. But also here and now in this webinar, we want to really give you what we can in terms of our tips and tricks and tools of how to wield and set up groups and group experiences so that you guys can cause this for yourself and your coaching experiences with your coaching groups. Um, there are two audiences that I can imagine for this presentation that, that may be present uh, here today. The first one is those who do group coaching. You already know you got a dog in this fight as it were. You, you do group coaching and you want to do it the best that you can and, and use all that's available uh, for the platform. The second audience that may or may not be in attendance, but they might be just watching the recording, which is those who don't. Like, I don't do group coaching, let me skip this one. Uh, but to them, I would say there's also benefit because maybe we'll find out that they should. Um, there's something really great about group coaching as a modality that sort of can complement the whole suite of things you do as, coach, as a coach with your offerings, your programs. Um, and if it's not on your radar to, well, I don't do group coaching, that's fine. Because if you listen in on this whole conversation, you might find that that might actually make a really nice addendum to what it is you do. Um, to frame that, to frame that why, I'm gonna step away a little bit from the coaching world and the coaching software world to go a little bit into the biz dev world, business development, and that is, coaching uh, group coaching can be a, a possible part of this particular funnel that is well enabled by coach accountable and the funnel goes you know at the lowest level do a course you you can have people sign up to participate in a course that you've created it's very hands-off for you as a coach they can kind of go through and not just passively consume your best of material that you curated and made available to to people who could sign up for it um, but they can also, you know, get what Coach Cannibal kind of uniquely provides, which is an actual interactive experience of going through and do, doing the, the accountability, the, the setting goals, the tracking things, all that's possible. Doing a course is your sort of first tier, your lowest tier, your most basic. Your second tier is being part of a group. You might have it that uh, after when someone does your course, you know, again, getting a sense for your style, what you have to teach, what you have to share and give. They might be like, hey, I'd like to upgrade to the next thing. Oh, the next thing is I could be part of a group program. And like the course, it scales really well in terms of your time. You can have group programs that, you know, you're, you're a little more, you're a lot more hands-on than groups, but not quite as hands-on and time intensive as what I call the third tier of the funnel, which is one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, someone might be participating in one of your groups and say, hey, this is really great. I like what I get from the group. I want to work directly with the coach. I want to upgrade to the next and final tier, as it were, of one-on-one -on -one coaching. This is all kind of a, a hypothetical three-tiered funnel, but it's really well supported by Coach Accountable. And if you've never thought of doing it, and if you only you know operate on one or two of these tiers, uh, I don't know if it's together, a powerful one. Let me just move the other one. Um, I'll edit that out of the recording. Um, if you've never thought about doing all three, let this, uh, this webinar be a place for you to consider if you don't do group coaching already, hey, group coaching might be a nice thing because it's a nice gateway to that, that third tier. So you can ease people in. Incidentally, 
this is a really nice thing that offerings can make possible. Offerings can be the entrance points to all of those. And beyond that little hint of, hey, use offerings because you can then make available these three uh, levels of service of working with you as a coach. Um, I leave it as an exercise to the listener, to the viewer, to figure out how to sprinkle those opportunities to upgrade, to consider like, oh, I could go to the next tier up. So that's our little context to frame what's at stake for having really great group coaching in addition to what you already know to want if you already do group coaching. But you know, if you, you don't, it still might be good to consider. So what we're talking about here today is all about running great coaching groups. Let me give you sort of the map, the overview, the this is where we're going and this is what we're going to cover. Um, fostering community is the first part and then going into shared experiences, leaderboard as well. You guys can all read. Let's jump in to number one of fostering community. I'm gonna pop out of here and let's go to an actual group. So we've got our clients. Let's have a group. Let's have a hypothetical group that we've got. We'll call it the Fit Club. Um, the first thing when setting up a group, when it comes to cultivating community and, and letting people get to know each other and have that sort of benefit of camaraderie of these are people going through the shared experience, um, you want to set up settings of what are they allowed to do? So in participation, there's two flavors of groups, um, ones that are completely for your own administrative work. We'll talk about those at the tail end um, because we're real focus in letting groups actually participate in the course itself. Um, and as you can see right here, there's an awful lot of things that you can allow or disallow um, your clients to do. As a general rule, it, it all depends on the structure of your groups and what context you're working in. But to whatever extent that you can find it appropriate, the more of these, the better. And the reason behind that is the, you're kind of setting up an illegalitarian playground, a, a sort of playing field where everyone is sort of equally empowered to participate and be a part of it. So much of the Coach Accountable app is a very asymmetrical relationship where the coach is kind of leading and the client is following. The coach assigns things, the clients do. Um, you've got the opportunity with group coaching to let clients self-generate their participation. And when you can kind of unlock or enable that sort of alchemy of people rising up and taking their own leadership and, and creating their own destiny inside of the context of coaching that you're providing, you really enable both community to, to unfold, but also a sense of that autonomy and leadership and self-directedness to give them more out of the experience of being coached by you. So we got some good things. So can they comment on group happenings? Hopefully so. This is the stuff of little micro conversations on a given assignment or a given video that you may have shared with them or things that uh, out of the session notes that you shared from a given session that group uh, appointment that you had. Another one, post group messages. Um, do you want it so that anyone can post a message and then invite little conversations? Again, those commenting micro conversations to happen on it. Maybe there's too much noise on the signal if you've got 50 people. Maybe you don't want to let them. But if it's possible and it won't get into that trap of, of, of too much going on, this is a great thing to enable. Private messaging in the group can be a wonderful thing if you want to, again, cultivate and foster and allow sort of offline conversations to be had where they're separate from the group, but you're letting, you know, coaches connect with one another. Sharing items from the stream with the group. Maybe they're working on individual stuff, their own worksheet. Maybe they want to be able to say like, hey, you know, I've been working on this metric of, you know, meditating and developing the habit of meditating every day. I'd like to everyone else to see what I'm up to separate from actual group happenings. Let me share that with the group. Also, like any other group item, this invites comment threads on those items. Sharing files, is it appropriate for them to share files? Maybe you want to let them upload pictures or videos or documents like, hey, I'm working on this draft of this chapter of this book I'm reading. Will someone take a look at it and check it out? Could be good to allow them to share files rather than just you as coach share with the group in a published manner. Creating group actions. This is the stuff of, um, well, let's all endeavor to call our moms this week. We're just going to create a group action and everyone's got to do it on their own and it's due on Friday and go. And that allows a sort of scoreboard of who's done and who's not and so on. Um, again, these can come on from on high as you as coach, but it also could be great to let them generate their participation and come up with ideas jointly that everyone wants to do this. Everyone's got buy-in as it were. These can be good things that can come around when you have your group conversations or other powwows. Group metrics, similar thing. Um, this is a little more rare because oftentimes you as coach will be dictating this thing of such a 
a group of metric is a, is a broad thing like, okay, we're all going to endeavor to track this. So it'll be a little less often that, you know, clients themselves should be generating that as, you know, Hey, everyone do this, but that might not be appropriate. And again, it's all in how you set the tone of what they should and should not do. Group worksheets, we're getting a little more into the niche. Um, you can have worksheets that are self-assignable, i.e., hey, I've got my worksheet templates. Generally, I, as coach, assign to you. But there are certain worksheets which are self-assignable. So anytime you want to do a, this particular worksheet, maybe it's a little check yourself before you wreck yourself work, uh, review or a little you know, creating a power context review, uh, you know, interactive exercise, you might want to make those. Any of those worksheets that are client self-assignable become group worksheet assignable by clients. It's a bit of word salad, but does that make sense? Generally, okay, great. And then finally, group whiteboards. Um, will you let people create group whiteboards? Whiteboards that are available to all the group and possibly editable by all members of the group so you can have sort of an evolving draft. If you're doing something like a group which might have a sort of core mission manifesto that is an evolving document where everyone can contribute what they think should be part of that seminal document that you know gives real context to the group. The group whiteboard would be great for that and it might be great to let people create those themselves. Second thing and you know again talking again on the umbrella of fostering community and how people interact and with each other we've got the setting of well how should people's names be displayed. Um, some groups you might have people really connecting with each other but a certain level of anonymity is important so you might not want to reveal full names to one another. Um, but if it's okay to have that sort of transparency, like everyone knows everyone's full name, no problem. Great. This is the default option. You can do that. And then finally, the default client settings. This gets to a little bit of the heart of, you know, when it comes to what are you letting people do? If you're letting them do all of it, may, and it's a big group especially, maybe some people want to be able to unsubscribe or subscribe to certain things. Um, here's the default settings, and then any given client member can set these for themselves. Mm -hmm. Is everyone subscribed to messages that are posted by the group? And is everyone subscribed automatically to comments posted by the group? Maybe by default you want these all off and let people opt in. That's your most conservative way if you're sort of have any concerns about needing to fight inbox overload. So these are your participation settings. Any questions about that? Cool. It's fairly straightforward, but there's a lot of power again in sort of really intentionally creating. Well, what are people in my group allowed to do? And what's, uh, what should we sort of simplify and streamline and not have them be doing so that I can be responsible as coach for leading the charge? Hey, John, I have a question. It's Laura. Yeah. Um, it's a question about, and maybe somebody who's got groups going could answer. Too, but the idea of these notification settings, whether it's better to default them off or to guide them to make their own notification. Because people... I've had an experience with Slack in a totally different environment um, where as soon as they start and the inbox starts filling or their phone starts going off like crazy, they, they kind of go right into overwhelm and don't, don't engage. That's a perfect bit of hazard. Anyone want to weigh in? I've got my own thoughts. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll take this one. Um, yeah. That's the thing of, again, be responsible that you're, clients, your group members are having a good experience. If you're, at a, you're operating at a size of more than about six people, client members, you might want to, as a rule of thumb, default that off and let people um, opt in. There's a couple of ways that you can also guide people to avoid the overwhelm. Um, here on the basics tab, we've got the email subject prefix. It's a pretty innocuous setting. You name your group and then the system defaults to bracket, group name, and bracket. This is great because every email that originates from this group starts with this prefix and people can then really easily set up a filter on their email to say like, all right, everything from this group, just route it to this folder. And when I'm in my group coaching groove, I'll go to that folder and go through bam, bam, bam. That's a nice sort of, shall we say, mitigation strategy from potential overwhelm. That's great. Thank you. Oh, you bet. All right. Um, the next part of, great question. Thank you. The next part of uh, fostering community is the directory. You can make a group directory for your clients to sort of, again, this is the stuff of fostering offline communications or like connections among group members that are not necessarily moderated through or mediated through the group. Do you offer a directory? You can offer no directory at all. No one sees the directory. No one sees anyone else. 
or maybe you offer an opt-in directory where people can be listed or not listed by default. And that includes you know, maybe just their email is appropriate, but maybe if everyone's getting intimate phone and, and or address, that's cool. It's up to you. And then you can also do the all inclusive uh, directory, which you probably want to let people know like, Hey, you're going to be in the directory and everyone will be able to see your name or your name and your email. Again, these settings allow you to sort of tailor just the right amount of transparency to both be respectful of privacy and any concerns, but also foster communication. Those are tugging in the right direction. So tune the dial as you see fit. Um, coaches can be included in the directory or not. And then there's another, the final one is let members set a profile to show in the directory. So there's basic phone bookie like information, name, email, address, but maybe you want to also let them sort of self publish their own little riff about like, Hey, here's me and I'm into walking dogs and coffee. Like most people, uh, whatever they want to and upload an image, like anything to sort of come more alive and bring more personality and, and sort of put that out there to the group so that other group members control that directory and see that sort of thing. So if you click update, we now have a directory that's turned on. So here in the directory, we've got these things and, um, we can every individual member from this little button here on the directory at my profile can set their profile. John, is it right that you can set your profile, different profile for each group? Correct. Great okay. question, Sue. This is set on a, on a per group basis. So whatever's appropriate to share in the context of a game group, that's what you can set. Great. And so yeah, once I do this, the little view more link appears and people can see that. So it becomes a sort of, again, a, a board with a little more personality than just the directory. And this is, again, all about letting people get acquainted with each other, letting people connect with each other as they see fit above and beyond the group. It adds a nice bit of dimension of like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in this coaching program and it too is good, but I'm also with a bunch of peers going through the same experience and connecting with them and forming, forming that sense of community with them and making some genuine friends is a real bonus to the whole experience. So glad I joined the group. And that's, that's it for that. Anything else about fostering community questions, comments? I believe we're ready. For I do have a question, John, and I don't know if this is the right place to ask it. Um, in terms of using Coach Countable as like a forum um, kind of a thing, I was looking at maybe the group messages, maybe using that as a forum, Absolutely. or maybe, is that possible? Or maybe even, and I don't know if this is possible, you have a great blog on Coach Accountable, whether that's a feature that's available for us to use too. Well, a blog is a very different thing than a forum board. True. But um, you're absolutely right in that, um, so let's go from the client side of the perspective. So Claire Client is a member of our Fit Club. And let's see, I, I hope I allowed her to, yeah, she can uh, do a message. So. Let's post a message to the members of Fit Club. I like dogs. And just post it. Now everyone who opted in per those settings got an email and this went right here. And then suddenly we've got, shall we say, a top level topic and everyone can comment and have a little thread about that topic. Mm -hmm. And again, everyone who's opted into comments just got an email and they can reply to that email and that'll go right in this thread or they can see it online and comment themselves and, you know, add to the thread. Okay. From the client side of the house, or the coach side of the house. I'm going to tell you Ms. Bell Schnauzer. So I'm a faker. I don't, I don't actually do it into schnauzers. If I did, I would know how to spell it. But there we go. We've got a sort of form like conversational thread based on a message. Um, I'm going to jump ahead to, to sort of talk about this. What's nice about this is you can have forum based type conversational threads about any sort of thing, including mm -hmm. group experiences, which actually is a perfect segue into our next slide, the shared experiences. Let's now talk about, we've, we've kind of covered a little bit about uh, how to foster community and make people available to each other to interact. Um, now here are the sort of shared experiences that you can put those groups into as part of your coaching. 
and this is sort of anticlimactic because it really comes down to a lot of the same items that are available with individual coaching. Uh, things like actions and metrics and session notes and worksheet assignments and doing appointments. These are things that are now, instead of like, I'm going to assign an action for one person. It's a matter of, I'm going to assign this action to everyone or maybe some people in the group. Maybe John's not into this one. Um, and we're kind of, this is the stuff of having a game where it's like, okay, group, let's all say we're going to walk our dogs by the end of the weekend, which certainly we'll probably have to do sooner than that. Um, this may have been the dog walk, but whatever. Uh, and we'll send a, set a reminder and... And I could send a notice via email. Again, it's much like a, assigning an individual action. Do I want to email my client to this? Or will, are we doing this on the phone and maybe I don't need to bombard people's email inboxes with too many notices? They'll know about it because we just talked about it. Um, yeah, we'll just do that. And now we've got a shared experience called walking the dog. And Claire's all like, hey, walking the dog. I totally did that. Let me... Oh, I can't mark it complete from here, but Claire has on her own dashboard in her actions, walking the dog. And so when she's done that, she can say, yep, totally walk the dog. And now that's the individual view of a group item. It's a sort of component. A given group item now has three individual action items for the three members who were assigned it. Actually two of them, but close enough. Um, if we go back to Fit Club, we can now see things have changed. Now we've got this little progress bar hey, how's the group doing overall on this thing that we all said we were going to do? If someone is late that, you know, fills up the progress meter, like, okay, we're half done and half undone, one outstanding. And if someone was a little late, it would be a little bit of the progress bar would be um, uh, red or yellow to color code and see. And you can get a real sense of, like, who's done what? And how's we doing on this sort of, we're all doing the same thing. Who's done what? Okay, we got Claire Client did it on time at this time, and Tracy Larson still outstanding. She'll get there eventually. Um, this is a share. This is what I mean by a shared experience. We're all going to endeavor to do the same thing, and then we can have little conversations and supportive interactions around, like, "Oh, how'd it go for you? Oh, I had a challenge with this, but remember what Coach said on the call. Don't forget about this." And then I was able to push through and do it. You know this You've now got this this access to have conversations around these group activities that you've done. We'll do another one here on the coach side of the house. Um, let's assign a group worksheet, similar to an action item. Yeah, we're gonna pick a template. Let's see here, let's just have everyone do a little wheel of light check-in, that'd be cool. And now I'm gonna talk about this setting here, the for clients. What do clients see? Um, I'm gonna jump ahead, one of the, one of the top level topics that we have for this webinar is uh, matters of transparency and accountability um, and how much group members can see. Sometimes it's appropriate to have total transparency. It can be a wonderful thing for everyone to see, hey, did you do this? Did you do it on time? Hey, your numbers, are you up? Are you down? Are you thriving? Are you struggling? Hey, your worksheet. You know, I filled out the same worksheet, the little check-in about uh, the wheel of life and how we we're feeling on these various categories. What was your, what were your answers this week? Sometimes that's really great because it sort of makes a, a sense of we're, we're all in this together and you kind of want to perform in a very healthy way. You don't want to look like a slouch. There's a sort of healthy peer pressure. Like everyone's going to see where I'm at. So let me make the effort so I can actually report with integrity, but also come in powerfully as I do that reporting. Um, and sometimes it's not appropriate. Sometimes it would be put undue pressure onto the group experience. Oh my God, I'm filling out this out and I'm doing this thing, but everyone's going to see my answer and I'm not comfortable with that. Maybe in a weight loss program, no one wants to see everyone's scale readings every week, but maybe it's kind of cool to see, well, here's where we are as an average. We're going in the right direction. These are the four levels of transparency that you can select for any given group item, for any given shared experience that you're giving this group to, to do all together. Uh, totally hidden as a group item means they don't know it's part of a group exercise. They only see it on their individual client page. 
the next one up is it's visible as a group item, but hide the group performance. This is nice in that, well, they won't see even the aggregate performance, that progress meter of who's done and who's not. They won't see that. But they will see, hey, it's a group item, and we can have a little micro conversation about it. Even though we're not sure how the group is doing as a whole, you as coach can see it, but they can't. That's fine. Visible and crude aggregate performance means, again, you're now going to see the aggregate, like, okay, here's the progress bar. Most people have it done on time. A few are outstanding. Some are late. We don't know who's who, but this is the overall climate of how people are taking to the thing. Again, you as coach will always see this, but do they see it? Maybe it would be good to let them see it so they can have a sense of pride, like, yeah, we all got it done. We all were totally in the green. We all walked our dogs on time. And then the final highest level of transparency is visible, including aggregate and individual performance. Oh, it's a mouthful. I don't know, the UX writer guy, that's me. Um, but it, that's what it has to say. It's the, your progress meter, your average chart graph for a group metric, and everyone can see everyone's individual stuff. Could be really good to have that level of transparency. Could backfire. It's a judgment call, and you wanna kind of foster a community that this is a safe space where this is okay to do. But if it's not okay, no problem. You can always back off to one of the lower levels. So in this one, individual performance, that means everyone will be able to see what's filled out for these worksheet answers. Could be a really good touch point. You know, if someone's saying like, oh, I'm a one on family, but I'm rocking and all these other things and you make some comments, someone else could read that and say, hey, Claire, that sounds like you're doing pretty good, but you know what works for me, family night, uh, where we just sit and you know, make pizza together as a family and watch a movie. Little suggestions and ideas can fly back and forth if everyone's kind of up and in everyone's world and can see that sort of thing. So this is a, another dial that you have to tune and can do it on a per item basis in terms of what people can see. And it's very powerful because it can, again, either shield people from what might be uncomfortable or enable great interactions that wouldn't have happened if people weren't so able to track with what everyone else is doing and how everyone else is going. So we'll make it this one. We'll just kind of... Sign one of these real quick. You can notify people by email. This is great because then everyone will get it and be one click away from being able to fill it out. And now we have this new group item, this new group shared experience. All, all three of our group members are doing this. We've got three assigned, three that are outstanding. Let's go pop over to Claire's side of the house and do this worksheet. Claire gets the email. She's like, oh, I got a worksheet oh, for the group. It's our weekly check-in of whatnot. Oops, let's see, I need to refresh to show the new one. There we go. And Claire's like, oh, great. I'm going to fill this out. And I know everyone's going to be able to see it. And that's going to be OK. Oh, not so great on family, but I'm just so fit and buff. And I feel like I'm rocking it. And I'm roundhouse kicking amazingly. Claire marks are complete. Meanwhile, back on the group page from Claire's perspective, one is done, now two are outstanding. And what she can see when she clicks the view details triangle is her own answers and then not yet done for the other two. Again, that's a sort of window into what's everyone individually doing? And everyone can see her thing. And John Tester might uh, hop in here and comment. Right now I'm logged in as Claire, but pretend I'm John like. And whoever subscribed to email comments will get this. And again, there's a little comment thread that's building on this particular activity at the level of group. So we've got shared experiences at the level of group that you can provide with, again, those little tuning dials for both um, transparency and, and being able to see and be mindful of privacy as well. Any questions about these? All right, moving on, this is great. Next up, leaderboards, which is a fancy, term of art that everyone can appreciate, but basically it is a group metric. So we can have a group metric where everyone's tracking the same thing and we'll be able to sort of view our aggregate performance. So group stream, item, item group metric. Everyone, let's call it walking the dog, I guess. Nothing going here, I didn't even contemplate this. How many times did you walk your dog? We'll start it, oh, we'll backdate it a little bit and put some data in maybe. And uh, 
Let's see. Maybe we make this a weekly thing where people can say how many times did you walk in the in the last day? Because or in the last week, because that's more of a score that uh, varies. I'll just say weekly on Mondays. Maybe, yeah, that'd be great. And then. The general is a group we want to commit maybe to walk your dog twice a week. By the end of this whole exercise, we want to get better at it and get into the habit. Maybe five times a week becomes the bar and we want me to exceed and so on. We can allow individuals to set their own targets and then these become defaults that can be overridden on a per client basis. But maybe it's important to everyone's playing the exact same game with the exact same goal. It's up to you to sort of tailor and tune that as you see fit. Play options, not terribly interesting, I guess, between one and seven. I don't know, I guess people walk people, dogs twice a day. I did that once. Um, so maybe 14 is the, the highest number we would ever uh, anticipate. So we'll just kind of do that. And this is kind of fun. We'll remind the people on days when they should. That sounds great. And then, yeah, we'll get an average going. And then here again is that client visibility. And for a leaderboard, this is the stuff of total transparency. Total, everyone can see everyone's numbers and it becomes this great positive peer pressure to perform because you don't want to be the only one who didn't walk your dog this week because everyone will know. And there's no, no one can't hide out in the, in the circle in the, on the fringe of the group and, and sort of not participate. Instead, one is behooved to, to, show, to show up and, and participate and be part of it all. So that default choice of total transparency is great. And we'll hit create. And there we go. We've got our little leaderboard. This metric basically will be filled in as people walk their dogs. And that's, um, as we can see right now, it's not too interesting because it's a fresh thing. We'll go over to Clara's side and this is where it was handy to backdate some of the things we were doing. Let's go to the walking our dog and say on this week, I did seven times, 12 times, four times. Her chart starts to grow, to show up. And then back on the group leaderboard, we've got actual new data coming in where dog walking is happening. Here's the number of average times. It happens to be identical to what Claire's numbers were because that's what happens when you average one number over itself. And then again, we can kind of drill in and see everyone's chart. And this itself becomes this sort of leaderboard of total transparency. How's everyone doing? And it invites, like every other group item, comments on it. And that's leaderboards. I mean, there's a, there's a great blog post to, to get into more in-depth things, why group metrics are awesome. Highly recommend reading if you're at all interested in employing groups in your, uh, excuse me, metrics in your groups and getting ideas for how to do group metrics. Uh, any questions about that? Um, this might be a comment that turns into a question, but one of the things I was trying to wrap my head around was, was this very idea of not using Facebook anymore as a professional tool, because it's just not. And so as I'm seeing this um, scroll, I guess the, the way to think of the stream is, is that's like the, the timeline or whatever the, the discussion or whatever it's called now in yeah. the group where you're scrolling to find what's there. Mm -hmm. um, is there, oh, oh I think I just answered my own question. I was gonna say, is there any way if they know they're looking for a metric, but it's the filter on the side? Like yeah, here's, here's the tip that's easy to miss. If you double click on a certain item, that means show me only this one. So to pull up all metrics, you don't have to go through an uncheck, 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 just double click. And uh, that's your sort of leaderboard view and like, oh, let me give me all the session notes. Oops, there's no session notes. But... I don't know that. Yeah, I'm, gl I'm glad you asked because I, I totally forgot to tell people that trick. So yeah, it's chronological, but yeah, you can filter down to, to narrow in on those things. And especially that's handy when you're doing leaderboards, groups, metrics, because metrics tend to get buried over time because they're kind of, they, they stick around for months and are relevant for months. So double clicking to reveal metrics. Um, you probably won't ever have more than two or three group metrics active at a time. So if you, if you keep to that rule of keeping it tidy, then these are easily accessible, the ones that are sort of in play as it were. 
What about if you complete metrics like you do with a private client and that there's a tab where you can go back and see past metrics versus current? Is that available in the group? Not a thing in groups. They just get buried further in the history. Got it. Just like, like um, group uh, metrics on the individual stream are also just sort of dated whether they complete or not. Okay. Hey, John, I got a quick question for you. Yeah, you listen. Um, I've, on the metrics again, um, is there a, I haven't really gotten crazy in depth into it and, uh, we're trying to figure out if there's a way of being able to get our, um, our clients to basically check in every day, whether yes, they got all their daily tasks done or they didn't. Um, and we want to be able to see, uh, uh, you know, try to track that in the metrics of like, Hey, here are the days where you didn't get everything on your daily checklist done. And here is what you did. It's Cause right now I'm noticing numbers, but I'm trying to figure out if there are ways of doing questions that they are checking off like, yes, yes, no, no. And then that converts into that way over time, you can see like, Hey, you used to be slacking off and not getting a lot done. And yeah. now you're like really getting all your daily activities done. Like streaks. Correct. Hey, we're, we're really big on accountability and obviously, you know, building out uh, their, their, their activities that they got to do. Now I get that there's a progress, but if we do it in a group, everyone's got their dailies in that group and just being able to track and make sure that everyone is kind of doing everything. And I'm just trying to figure out how you can do that. If you can show me. Yeah. So there's a couple things. Um, binary metrics, Form-based worksheet check-ins and computed values are the three sort of answers. They're each topics unto themselves. So I'm going to go very quick through a couple of these only. And then I'll give you sort of uh, reading to do offline to sort of get into these. But first, a binary metric. Did you do your stuff? Yes. A yes or a no. One yes or no yes. It's kind of awkward, but bear with me. It'll, it'll make sense shortly. We'll call it a daily practice. Two weeks, right? Or three weeks. You said it's every day. Cool. And um, so here's the here's the voodoo. Point one into point point five to point five. Half. Half is the dividing line between good and evil. A one is in the green. A zero is in the red. Higher is better. Um, and I'm just gonna do this and two one zero because a one means I did it. A zero means I didn't. And reminders daily, that's your sort of automatic trigger to, to trigger them to actually do it. And text or email, they can just reply to that. So no excuses, just say one or zero, did or didn't. Maybe make a comment, I did, I'm awesome. Zero, I was sick in bed and I'll, I'll, I'll be better tomorrow, whatever. It tells a story after time, that's the beauty of it. And then averaging is great for a binary metric. And then whatever you do here, leaderboard style, um, total transparency. Let's, so this is not interesting but it is when you put data in. So let's go to Claire client and put some stuff in. Did you do my stuff? Going too fast. So we can see how the binary data is shaking out over time. And if there are comments that get piped in one way or the other, that builds a story that everyone can kind of see, or at least people who are participating can see and get a thing. So this looks bad at first because the other people haven't done it, they haven't piped in, so they're counted as zeros. And then we get, because we did a binary metric, it magically just says like, you know what, a binary metric might, instead of the graph, let's just do a bunch of checkboxes. So you get now checkboxes. And the little comments are hover text. That's super dope, I, I like that. It's just simply, hey, you got your stuff done, you didn't get your stuff done. That's simple as that. And if you want to go fancier, let's talk about a worksheet that could be a sort of check-in for that. And I'm, again, I'm going to go light speed and hopefully I can just pull one off the rack that is close enough. Oh, here we go. This will, that's pretty good. You could have a worksheet. Oh wait, no, I got a computed value one. This is great. Right, here's our computed value. Um, where, you know, these could be check boxes. Did you do your stuff in the family department? Did you do your stuff in the fitness department? Da, da, da. And then you can actually have the system automatically generate the total points if you want to have a weighted thing using computed values. And I'll show you how that works real quick. You can kind of see like number of points accumulate and percentage goes up accordingly. So if you've got a multi-dimensional thing called like, hey, there are six areas of life, yes or no's, give them a daily worksheet. 
with six different checkboxes and then you could actually generate a score and that score could then pipe into a metric and that metric could then be a group metric showing overall stuff. Low to how it grows, but it's kind of fun. Those are your, those are your building blocks to innovate as you see fit. Hey John, on the last screen, you had a checkbox showing, uh, showing everyone's progress. Can they, yeah. can they actually check on that screen? No, the user interface is not meant to that. It's a display only, okay. but like I was saying with the form-based worksheet, you could have them check a box where they're filling out for a given day and have that worksheet go up once a day so they fill it out every day and it is their checkbox sort of way of doing it. Okay. Oh, Ulysses, anything else? Did I cover that pretty well? You got some stuff? We'll, we'll put some uh, blog links in the, in the chat and you can kind of follow up and go more in depth. So great question though. Let us move on to the second section, with the next section, which is largely done. Transparency matters. Um, this is the stuff of that, that key setting. What do you want people to be able to see? Oops, now we're just looking out of the wrong place. Um, this transparency setting for a given group item settable on a per item basis allows you to let everyone sort of bear their soul and see it, or, or oh, we're just only going to see the whole thing. Again, I as coach can always drill into the, the full story, but the question is, do I want my coaches to, clients to? Would it be appropriate for my clients to? Um, the other part of that transparency stuff is, again, that, that key idea of what is a group item versus what is an individual item that is, just happens to be part of a group item. As, you, as you've seen, everything I've made here is these, of these group items, this action, this, these metrics, also appear on a client's regular page as individual items that are in turn part of the calculation of the overall performance, average amount, total amount, whatever. So it's, uh, it's easy to, to lose track or get tripped up like, well, wait, what can my group member see versus what do my clients see? Um, a common pattern is to work with say two business owners who are partners and you put the two business owners in a group and then they also have their own individual individual stuff. So whatever's appropriate to, for that sort of transparent sharing, you would put it in as group items, but certain things you're doing with one partner or the other, you just make those individual items and you can rest assured that actual individual items, items that are originated on the client's own client page are not visible to the group unless explicitly shared, which is, let's see here, kind of fun. Um, did I make it so then? Well, let me, let me show you that, uh, that notion of sharing group items. Back here in the settings, back to where we were, um, share items from their stream with group. Yeah. Oh, right, Claire doesn't have any because all her stuff are already group items. So you might someday wonder, hey, why can't I share this item with the group? It's already a group item, so the share button doesn't appear. But if we were to make another item, Is an individual item. Claire wrote it. She's sharing with her coach. It's not a private one. She marks complete. Maybe she'd like to, oh, I did some great journaling. I talked about the existential stuff about whose eyes this was for. Let me share it with the group because I'd love everyone to be able to see my work. Here on the stream, let's just show the journal entries. There's a share button. Claire belongs to one or more groups where sharing from her stream is allowed. So she clicks share, and because she belongs to only one group, um, it says my coaching group. You, if she belonged to multiple ones, she, the system would say, well, which group would you like to share with? And now it's shared. What that looks like here, of course, we go to the group item in the stream, and then it's shared. And then there's an unshare button called, hey, this is not usually a group item. This isn't really big on here. So if you want to unshare it, you can unshare it. Those are your sharing controls. And then again, that's a sort of that dichotomy between individual items and group items and where they kind of blur and mesh together. Keeping those straight by understanding the underlying concepts will, will save you some headaches about like, wait, why isn't this appearing here? Or why, is, why can this person see it when they shouldn't? Any questions about transparency matters? I have a question about the group that you were just talking about. This yeah. is Dave. And uh, in my coaching program, we use uh, personal accountability partners. We use the group. So that makes us 
uh, accountable, accountable to coach, accountable to group, and accountable to another person in that group, accountability partner. So is this where I would set up those two accountability partners and give them the option just to see each other and communicate with just each other? Exactly. So here we got the Fit Club. We'll say that this is our big group. Let's just add a few more people to make it make more sense. So here's our main group. And then you, Deanna, can, can create an, other mini groups, which are the accountability buddies um, that represent just the two. So, so we'll say that they can interact and it's going to be these two. I just happen to type this name for my own booking purposes. This doesn't pick the members yet. Um, so I'm going to create this group. Maybe we need a directory, maybe we don't. And then I will make the membership be who it should be. Okay, let's pick these two partners, uh, Claire and where is she? There we go, and uh, Tracy. And there we go, a group for two. And that's all. Whatever stuff they want to share, they would do here in the group in this little group for two. And hey, then that's again, pretty cool. Yeah, thanks. Awesome. You're welcome. Great question. And like, yeah, the the thing now to to bear in mind. So now Claire belongs to two client to two groups, right? Say she wants to share some stuff, we'll unshare. And, oops, oh yeah, we're around the group. And now she can pick. Should I part, share it with the whole group or just my accountability partner? And then she can do that. So it's all about sort of the proper scoping, the proper place for the proper things so that everyone can see what they should and not see what they shouldn't. It's a little bit of a dance, but again, once you understand understand the the concepts good to go thanks for putting a punctuation mark on the side of them. i think that's good good finish all right that's number four john i have a quick question on that last one you so the can you share to both both of them because i saw that when you were clicking you had to choose one or the other uh sharing to either the accountability uh, the partner group the two group or the all group what if you wanted to share to both if that's a limitation. That's a great question. No one has ever busted me on that. It's a total limitation of the software because I didn't, I'm like, eh, I'll program it so you can share it with multiple if anyone ever asks. Six years in, no one's ever asked except until right now. So you let me know if it's a burning issue. Maybe we'll add that. Uh, right well, now. I mean, I, I only see it as uh, um, uh, some potential mentors, right, that are also like the coaches that are also going to have their freebie account to kind of also have uh, actionable items uh, themselves to be uh, right the group, not just be the coach, but also be within the group. Right. And Use your freebie they, client. That's great. If they, if they created something that they wanted to share to multiple different groups that they're part of that, you know, like that journal entry, something that they were like, oh, hey, this is really awesome. Let me share it into all these groups. That's the only reason why I, I, I thought of that. Tell you what, if it comes up in earnest as a problem, let me know. Because um, it, 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 would, it would take not even an afternoon to, to, to tweak the things to, to make that possible. Um, like I said, sometimes I take little shortcuts and, and basically say to my, murmur to myself, like, let's see if anyone complains about this. Well, sounds to me like we got an action item for you, brother. We okay. might. <laughs> Again, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait for you to actually say it in earnest. To me, I don't mean to diminish your comment, Ulysses, but to me that sounded like an academic curiosity more than a burning need for your coaching needs. So, good stuff. John, good. can I ask a question about groups? Um, I don't know if this is going to be covered in the collaboration, but um, I was thinking about I'm doing a live Q and A, for example, mm -hmm. for a group. So, is if I set up like a group appointment? Um, it, it, does that allow me to track who's actually showing up that appointment as a group or? It doesn't because the appointment just happens, whether it's on okay. a Zoom room or some conference bridge or some other venue, Google Hangout. Coach can, can't really tap into that to take attendance for you. Okay. But um, then so if you were using Zooms, the Zoom side of it could. So you could just use the appointment to as like the notification. Hey, does Zoom have actual like attendance tracking? I kind of always wonder. I believe like, it does. Tracking? I believe it does. Yes. Yes, it does. It tells you how many people registered, how many people actually attended, all that other fun jazz. Oh, I feel like I could get all voyeuristic after this call and see who was on the line. It's great. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. So yeah, there's that. Um, good. Anything else before we move on? All right, collaborative efforts. Um, so a lot of what we've talked about right now with those shared experiences, basically kind of independent running in parallel. What I mean is everyone go call your mom or everyone go walk your own dog. 
and everyone does it and we can see at the level of group how we're doing are people following through are they doing it or not but it's not collaborative working on the same project so much um, so there's two dimensions to collaborative stuff that you can do one I alluded to earlier which is whiteboards for the group you can have a whiteboard and if you have whiteboards you might make it so that let the group edit this, the group clients can edit it so that it can be something that everyone can be a part of. And then people can kind of pick up the whiteboard and, and put it in edit mode, add their two cents, hit save, and it becomes the next draft and most updated thing and everyone can kind of do that. So that becomes a sort of collaborative document that people can chime into at the level of group. The other dimension of collaborative efforts is something totally new that none of you knew existed until I tell you right now, unless you were a student observing earlier, uh, something I'm proud to have added over the last week, which is action projects, group action projects. And this is different from group actions where group actions were the stuff of like, okay, everyone go do this and I hope you do it on time and report back. Group actions is the whole thing of like, okay, we got this project. We only need one person to do all the steps, but all the steps need to be done. So it's sort of the blending of, uh, if you're familiar with action projects at the level of individual, which is sort of a, a nice grouping of um, action items under a certain umbrella uh, topic, and then a progress meter that slowly fills up as things get done. Here we can now make a project. Uh, what should the project be? I didn't even think this far ahead. Let's call it a caper. Let's do a heist. That's kind of fun. All right, we got an action project, so let's add, let's add an action. So if you're gonna have a heist, someone's gotta get the van. Who's gonna get the van? Uh, oh, I need more members in here. Oh, I'm accountability partners, hold on, let me just, I can't remember what it is. Oh, here's another fun thing, the, the ability to navigate between groups and like sort of scroll forward and backwards. Let's go to Fit Club here. Let's set up our heist here. Let's turn on action projects again here. This is now under basics, the add-ons tab has couple of bonus things you can add on or not. If you want to streamline things and you're never going to do these things, turn it off, keep it simpler. Um, but turn it on if it's useful. So here we go, let's make our project. I don't need a fan for the last. Uh, Casey, do this one. Save the heist, it's going to be next Saturday, so we got some time, we just need a day of. Reminder this time. Email our attendee or our assignee. And uh, more things. Who? What else do we need? Um, is anyone? I don't know. It's a niche thing. It's a great movie. I don't know. Okay, so there's our project. Certain people have certain things that they're supposed to do. Um, I, as coach, can certainly add group projects and assign to whoever. Can clients assign to each other? The answer is yes, they can, so long as they're allowed to do that sort of thing. And this is tied to this exact same setting. Um, if clients have this permission checked, then they can also do projecty stuff in the group context. So that's where the, the permission of that is. And this is again, the stuff to loop back to what I said at the top of the thing, fostering that sense of autonomy and people participating and generating their own stuff together. If you've got a group and they're all kind of doing their own thing independently, you know, but signed up to do your thing and into the, com the community of it all, you probably won't use group projects. But if you're working with a team of people who are all in some given company, they might well do group projects all together where everyone's sort of planning something and you know who's responsible for what piece. And if you're sort of just the coach who's overseeing it, but you guys can do what you do and assign to yourselves and everyone can be responsible for marking things complete as you go, group projects are gonna be a great fit for that and you allow people to assign to one another through group actions, permission here. So that's it, um, as things are done, you know, I as coach can mark all these done. Let's see here, let's go to Casey's side, of Claire's side of things, and see what she can do. So, and now she sees the group action projects because it turned it on for the group. And she can't mark these complete. See how it's a little faded? You can kind of see the little avatar behind it. 
These are not for her to mark complete. They're only for the assignee, in this case, me as coach, or the person to whom it was assigned. Assigner, I guess, and assignee. Um, those are the people who can mark it complete. So she can add to it though. Uh, and she can assign to others and assign to herself. And there we go, we got two things that she could mark complete. See if you have her nothing doing here, but you know, done, I can mark this complete. And I assign this to George. I, as Claire client, assign this to George. So George can tell me, yeah, I got it done. I'm like, okay, great, thanks for doing that. And then the progress bar fills up as people do their thing. And that's group action projects. Any questions about that? Can, John, can you use this for coach groups? So if you have a group of coaches or is it just assigned to clients? It just assigns to clients, but if you're doing coach groups, you should probably do what a lot of people have done called, you know how every coach is entitled to get their own freebie client? Right. Take all those freebie clients and put them in their own coaches group so that they can experience the full gamut of functionality of being on the client side of things. So yeah, that totally, you know, by doing it that way, then yes, the whole of group action projects becomes unlocked for coaches doing collaborative projects themselves. Okay. Cool, and that's that. All right, so moving on to our last thing. We're just over the hour, so we're gonna wrap it up soon. Um, but the administrative tools and tricks uh, I alluded to earlier, you can have groups that are actually not for clients to see. They're not supposed to know they're in a group. They're not gonna message each other. They're not gonna really participate in any sort of group thing. It's just for your own sake. So let's talk about the certain things you could do within what I call administrative only group. Admin stuff, only let me see how things at the group level. Here, the directory doesn't matter, right? You know, if, it, if they were a part of it, maybe group directory, but no, nope, only me. So if I have an admin only group, um, there's a couple things I can do. Uh, say I'm working, say I've got 30 clients and six of them are for, from a particular company. You know, they're all kind of in their own little world. They're not doing group coaching stuff, but I'd like to have them kind of together so I can message them all at once or, and kind of see what's going on. Um, from the membership, let's say that these four are all in a given group. Um, I want to have them handily grouped together as a unit, but it's not a group coaching experience I'm trying to cultivate. But for my own sake, it's nice to be able to say, hey, let me, let me send a message to everyone uh, at this company. And I can do that. Or I can also um, filter and scroll through. Say uh, I'm about to have a, a, a group session with this company and maybe I'm gonna go on site. Let me see how all four of them are. Uh, you could go here and say like, okay, first I got to look at Casey and then Claire and then George and uh, who was the fourth one? Or you can go click into the group. I suppose I, instead of admin stuff, I could give it like a hypothetical company name. But basically, if you click on any of the members from here, Casey, Cassandra, George, Jamie, it's kind of catchy, um, are now previous and back is sort of limited to the scope of the group who I'm surfing through. So I'm just gonna surf through it. What's new with everyone at this company? What's new with everyone in this group? Okay, we got Casey and Cassandra and George and Jamie. This allows me to really quickly focus in on just a sort of group of clients that I'm concerned with for a review and a touch base and a check in on all these things. I've got a question, John. Yeah. This is really, really crazy, but could I use that feature to run my team with? Do you have a coaching team? Yeah, I mean, no, it's a, a team of my. Um, Admin help, VAs, uh, marketing uh, um, companies, and stuff like that. Could I plug them in here, and so my team could all see what we're doing for my business? Right on. Yeah, I mean, as you know, coaching is so like niche specialized to make coaching the best. But there's a lot of overlap with any sort of collaboration, productivity, keeping track of who's doing what sort of thing, kind of software that does this. So if it, if it's a medium that serves and, and you want to keep it all in one house, you could absolutely ask, add those people as clients and then make them their own group and do all these new things. I think um, group action projects, this new release that I you know, just announced five minutes ago is probably a nice thing in that direction for that particular need. So not too crazy, I'd say. No, thanks okay. so much. Yeah, you bet. All right, let's see, back to the thing. Um, just a few more things. For admin stuff, yeah. 
Oh, uh, so no, what, the, the, what you were doing right now, the um, uh, how the admin stuff, right? Uh, that could also just be like also a group of all your one-on-one -on -one coaching clients. So they're basically like you've got a group with all your one-on-one -on -one that are basically you're doing one-on-one -on -one the same with every single one of them, but they're not interacting with each other, right? Exactly. It's a sort of administrative division that allows you to surf through and prioritize and filter by a certain type. And as you know, you can make as many groups as you want and people can belong to multiple groups. So whatever administrative divisions serve you, just, you know, toss them off like, like they're nothing and they're, cause they're cheap. They're just easy to set up and yeah, if they're useful, I'm for it. Um, a couple of things like say, uh, bulk sharing. Um, if we have people who are in a group that's non-participatory, but I want to quickly share with everyone in the group, instead of going to everyone's um, individual page and share a file, share a file, share a file from my library, I can share with all the members a uh, given thing from my library. Let's see, everyone needs a kitty in a hammock and uh, send an email. And this group message will go out to everyone individually, but without it looking like or being in the context at all of being in a group. So we can do that and then we'll just hit share. And then, then these four people who are members of the group now have this shared with them. Um, I can also do publishing of a whiteboard to everyone. Um, in the past, if you have a whiteboard which maybe has sort of general information, uh, at least to your point earlier, maybe things you need to know when you're one-on-one -on -one coaching me. Here are the rules, here's the call-in line, here's some key things to know about me, here's you know how we do it. You could create a single whiteboard and then sharing it to the group. Well, they, they don't belong to this group or it's, it's admin, it's closed and it's not visible to them. What that means is instead of this showing up as a group whiteboard because they can't see it, it magically shows up in their individual client pages, whiteboards. So we're gonna both publish a whiteboard to everyone. Generally visible, makes other things really matter. And then magically this thing appears in my members whiteboards tabs. Because again, they couldn't, they don't have the luxury of going to the group page itself because it doesn't exist for them. So John, if we did this um, with our one-to-one -one clients and you had a general procedures whiteboard, as soon as, with a new client, as soon as you add them to that group, that whiteboard's gonna show up, even though. Correct. Yeah, it's a common thing actually to have sort of your setup archiving materials ready to go. You can have the all files group where every file is shared with the group and then adding a person has the effect of them having all those files. Same thing, whiteboards. Again, those only work for administrative only ones when it comes to whiteboards, because if it's an open group, then they'll see it on the group page, not in the individual page. Subtle, but makes a certain sense, which you throw in that note. And that's it. That's, uh, that's all I got. Um, you know, here are the sort of, again, the, the broad strokes of the, here are the building blocks you have for running great coaching groups. And if you do this, you're not only gonna do better group coaching, You'll engage people a little more to participate, have them have a sense of community where they got more than they bargained for, more than just what you're teaching. And it can be a stepping stone in a lovely way to sort of up the funnel of like, if you like our group experience, try the one-on-one, -on -one, or maybe we've got these other programs that go well as well. Um, I am now gonna open it up for any questions, uh, any topic for me or others that are present on the line. Ulysses. Uh, so going back again to that, uh, uh, obviously that punch joke uh, and uh, drilling that action item. So my question would be that, uh, what, uh, what function is currently available to where I can send one message to multiple different groups that I choose? Not everyone, but either individuals or groups that I want to that, that I want to. So do. individuals, there's bulk messaging. Basically, the answer is not exactly what you want, but so at an individual level, you can pick some or all groups and there's with no regard to grouping. If you want to email multiple groups, you would go into each group and email them separately, email the group. There's no way to sort of do a distro, like a, a join of like whoever's in these three out of seven groups. You'd have to go to each of the three groups and send it separately. Um, and then you'd run the risk of if someone belongs to two of those groups, they get the email twice unless you manually unselect them. Does that make okay. sense? 
Yeah, absolutely. Is there a potential for the future of being able to do something to where we can message, um, uh, like, you know, like I said before, either something that you want to share to their stream, like something that you journaled or file, whatever, and you want to share it to multiple different groups so that way they all have access to it. Because one of the things that we're doing is that um, even though we have accountability groups um, and coaching groups, some of them are, 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 are the same. They're the exact same uh, style of groups. They're either real estate investors, real estate investors, real estate investors. But what we're trying to avoid is we have a mentor for each group and, and, and for that mentor to not be overwhelmed with 20. So instead they only have five people assigned. Right. But overall head coach, he comes up with something to distribute to all of them instead of having to go into each one and having to recreate it. Hey, I'm going to share it to these groups because every single one of these groups is the exact same thing. It's just yeah. not overpopulated in each group to where it's too much noise. Right. That would be the stuff of using that multiple hierarchy of group like we covered with Diana's question. Remember how you can have the Uber group and then there's little fractions with factions within. So in your situation, it would be five, you know, four groups of five clients each, but then you'd make the Uber group of 20 clients and your head coach would post that, that nugget of wisdom, those session notes, that whatever, to the group of 20, not to the group of five, four times over. Okay, I'm going to have to experiment with that because I, I don't really know how to probably get into that just yet. Of, like you said, big group and then the smaller groups within it. So I got I to gotta still figure that out. Very good. All right. Anyone else for a wrap up the, uh, the recording? Okay, great. I think it's been great. Um, oh. Wait, I have one. Yes. I just have to go to my list here. <laughs> uh, oh yes. So my, my scenario is that I am um, doing a live workshop and, um, and we, John, you and I had spoken about using groups, you know, alongside live events. Mm -hmm. So people are registering. There's eight registered now, and I've got the, you know, welcome, and here's how to set it up on your phone, and please complete the action of putting your photo up and just getting them in. And so that's a course that they get immediately when they register um, through the offering. But now I'm curious, as we go forward, some of them are be be going to be better than others at getting all set up right away. Um, mm -hmm. If I send a message to the group and I've got a mix of people who have got who have accepted the invitation and those who haven't got to it yet, will that message still go out to all of them? Like their email address is in the coach accountable system. They are quote unquote clients. Yeah, they will. Um, so the system is smart in that it skips sending automated messages to clients who have not even been invited yet. So if you set up a new client, put an action, have a reminder before it is due, and you haven't even invited them, the system's like, mm, they probably shouldn't get this. Conversely, a message that you send as a posted message to everyone in a given group, they're gonna get that because the system's like, mm, I bet Laura really means for them to get it. No, no matter what they've done, we'll send it out to them. So that's if I go into the group and, and do group message, that will go to all? Correct, all members that are active. Okay. Or unless you pick, you know, just a subset. And you always have, whenever creating any sort of group item, the, who are you including? Everybody or some of them? Everybody by George. George. Yeah, so my real world example would be, say, the day before, a day or two before the workshop, whether they've gone in, set themselves up, done the, the worksheets or not, a see you tomorrow message with yeah. details. Definitely a good idea as a reminder. And yeah, it will, like you said, if you blanket send it and you've already got the membership right, which I believe will automatically happen because I presume your offering has them automatically added to the group. Yes, correct. Good to go. Oh, that is awesome. Thank you. Yeah. All right, everybody. I'm going to wrap it up. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for coming. Great conversation. I hope this is useful. If you have any follow-up questions, um, let us know. We'll post some show notes with some clutch uh, and very topical blog posts that go into more detail and we'll see you next time.